they allow so much slop and jitter in there that it can't be used. Also, Bluetooth range, if you want to use this to mow your yard, you know, that you're not going to have the 50 foot or 100 foot range that you need for that. Now, if you want to spend some more money and get a VHF transmitter, they're like $50 instead of $14, and you get a much, uh, this is going to drop out. In fact, the fact that it's been sitting here running for a while, it's, I may have to, re, may have to retune the receiver, but uh, so it's kind of bad for that. But like I said, the cheap stuff, if we get to work with cheap, then we can go better later, once we understand how it works. Okay, some definitions. Radio, uh, distance, you know, the distance between the devices, between, between the stuff. And so it just defined this as one distance, and then this is that one plus D1, this is plus, T, plus D2. And it turns out these two deltas, D1 and D2, are the things that we can measure. And so can we figure out where the microphone is from that? So D1 and two, D2 are the uh, delta, or difference in time of arrival of the pings. So the three speakers are going to be pinging and the microphone will be listening to it. If we can calculate what those two differences are, we can figure out where the microphone is. Uh, assuming that we know where the beacons are and those are terrestrial things and we're going to fix them. So I've got a, a little marker to say where they are in here. And you, you get to key that in. Here's a couple of things. Could we get by with just two beacons instead of three? Well, no, for a couple of reasons. One is that if, you, if you're doing like this, this this uh, intersection of those two lines, where that line, or where that circle and this circle cross, it could cross at two places. Uh, this arc and that arc and that arc, and it, it's two places. So you can say, well, no problem, just uh, put the beacons along the fence in your yard, or put them along the wall, and the, there's no, the robot's never going to be on the other side of the wall, so you could do that. But, but, th that might sound like it worked, but it's actually, it's worse than that. So I, let me just give you a definition. Let's draw some circles here. And, and I've kind of turned it around. Instead of drawing the circles from there to here, I'm drawing them from here out. And this is just another way of stating R plus D1. But the problem is that you can have the same D1, see how, see how this radius here doesn't change, but the R did. And so the thing that you can measure is the delta, the delta difference in time of arrival. And that didn't change, but the robot's location changed. So that's the problem. That's why you can't do it with two beacons. It's impossible to do it with just two. But you can do it with three. So what I've done here is to, is to, to take two of the beacons and say, what are those constant differences in time of arrival? So the robot could be anywhere along this hyperbola and have the same di difference in time of arrival from these two beacons. But that's no good. You don't know where it is. Well, take. Let's go back. Let's take the other pair of beacons. All right, that gives you a different difference in time of arrival, and where those two hyperbolas meet, that's where the robot is. And this is the 70-year-old idea. This is a uh, Coast Guard uh, Loran map for. It's probably Long Island. Some uh, I forget where, but anyway, these. This, it's hard to see the colors, but here's one color of hyperbolas, and here's another. So they're giving you the, uh, uh, the constant time difference in time of arrival curves for two different sets of beacons. And then you can either do it manually, or there's, you, know, you can buy a gadget for $100 that'll be put in your boat, and it'll tell you where you are. All right? So just a couple more definitions. The, the, the robots are located at, uh, the robot is located at XM and YM. I use M for microphone because that's what I was doing. I wasn't building a robot. And then the beacons are, are called A, B, and C. So they're the XA and YA, XB, YA, B, et cetera. Then we need to figure out what these circles are. And so you just do the equations for circles. And that's, you know, that's a, uh, what, eighth grade uh, algebra. So, but actually, you know, there may be another way of doing this. And once I got this to work, it's like, ah, you know, I've got other things to do. I, you could probably write the equations as ones for hyperbolas instead of writing the equations for circles. And I suspect that's what they're doing because I noticed that as an AP extra credit, not extra credit, just a normal AP uh, uh, pre calc math homework problem, they had to do a Loran thing. So this is, this is like in high school now. So 
So I suspect that I chose the wrong equations because here's the, you know, here's the solution to those equations. And I don't think that that was what the high school teacher was intending. But you know, when you got a computer, who needs brains if you've got a computer, right? <laughs> so once I, got, once I got the solver to give me this, it's like, I'm okay, done, move on, next step. And you go, well, there's so many terms in there, but it takes like a you know, hundredth of a second for it to calculate that, so no problem. Anyway, you may discover that there's a, a more elegant way of doing this, and I'm, I'm apologizing for not Spending You're lucky energy. that Will Kinley is not here because, believe me, he oh. obsessed over. I had a few extra calculations over what he could do. <laughs> Absolutely, trick magic. So Absolutely. he'd be here. He'd be giving me a hard time. And he <laughs> and he helped me quite a bit because, actually, the first time it did this, it had more than a million terms in it, <laughs> and it, and that did take a while to calculate. Right? It actually took like. 12 hours for the solver to come up with that and then uh, just to run it in the script in you know, runtime, hmm. it was like 12 seconds just to do it. So he showed me how to rotate the coordinate system so as to put one of the beacons at the origin and put the other beacon on one of the, one of the two axes. That eliminates three of the variables and cuts it down from a million terms down to, you know, 50 terms or 100 terms. So yes, absolutely, and I thank him very much for that. Um, so, that, so the script does that. It rotates, does the calculation, then unrotates. So the coordinates that you give to the script are real world coordinates. You don't have to rotate the coordinates. The script will do it for you. When I say script, all my code is being done as a MATLAB script or as an Octave script. Those are equivalent uh, coding. Uh, they are engineering development platforms uh, for, uh, for matrix manipulation, mostly math type stuff, but they're used in a variety of, of issues. So, is it in that, so the math was the easy part. Really. Now, does it work? Is it any good? Can we implement this cheaply? Well, I think it's cheap. So, we've got the computer. All right, you got the computer. You know, people say, yeah, they've got to take advantage, you know, put that cost in there. Now, yeah, all right. If you're going to implement it as a, as a box that you put in your backyard, yes, you're going to need another $50 computer to do that. Or get your hand-me-down from somebody else that you're going to throw away. That computer on the desk there is six years old. And I'm keeping it because it's, they don't make tablets like that anymore. They quit making them. So, and it's, it, anyway. So, that's, so you, don't, you don't need a fancy computer. The, the cheap speakers, you do need a multi-channel audio adapter. And you can't just cobble that together. The timing accuracy has to be precise. It can't, you can't take like two or three audio adapters and work, use them together because they will, they will be slightly different from one another. They have to be running, the, at least the output has to run, be running on the same clock. So I've got a, you know, a surround sound adapter, $45 at fries. So, all right, so that'll work. It, it's got eight channel output. I'm only using uh, three of them. So, well, that's fine. Then a uh, wireless microphone, and H, okay, all, all of those stuff. I, I, the only changes I made to off-the-shelf stuff is, you notice that one of the wires is really long, so I added some more wire. And these little cheap speakers, it's just a plastic box, a monolithic amplifier, and a two and a half inch single driver. And you tap on the box, and it, you can hear the box doing this, right? And that's at the frequency range of the ping, so I shoved some uh, fiberglass insulation in there. Seems to help a little bit. It's probably not necessary. In fact, one of them isn't done. I didn't, there's one of them I forgot to put the stuff in it, and it doesn't seem to make any difference. Here's what it, here's a schematic of it, because there's all this stuff up here. So it's got the computer, it's got a USB interface to the multi-channel audio output, which is feeding the three beacons. Crosstalk is a huge problem for this application. So I, you know, originally I was just using two and then one, right? Two speakers and then a third one. But there's crosstalk between these two because it goes through a single chip. The amplifier is one chip inside these cheap uh, things. So signal going from one affects the other. And if you're listening to music, I mean, who's going to uh, complain about crosstalk on a $9 pair of speakers, right? So see, the design, see how design criteria gets in there. So it's like, okay, go back to the store and pay another $9. And, all right, another $10 cable. That's, that just bugs me. <laughs> that copper costs more than silicon. Actually, uh, here's a fun fact. Uh, play sand costs more than memory. 
<laughs> Isn't that amazing? Um, so synchronization is actually very helpful. It can speed things up. It's not necessary, but it can speed things up. So I do have it set up here to do synchronization, and this is the, this is the way you accomplish that. You have the output feed the input, and when the pings are being issued, you're also listening to them with no delay in the air. You know, it's just a, a, an electrical connection. So that's what I'm actually demonstrating here, which, which violates one of my design criteria. So I wanted to point that out. I can prove to you that it works either way. It just takes longer without the synchronization. Here's, you, know, you can see the setup here, but it's in the slideshow if you want to look at that at a later time. Okay, so how does it work? Well, we issue the pings from the three speakers and they impinge upon the robot at different times. They have to be at different times. So. In, in essence, the first arrival be, is the sync for the robot. That lets it know there's going to be more. And then the delta in the time of arrival for the second and third one, that's the D1 and D2 that you use to figure out. Because you know where the beacons are, then you know where the robot is. Actually, D1 and D2, you have to subtract the initial time of arrival from that. But, but that's doable. All right. So, well, I said to go do the demo here. All right. Because the rest of it is, you may not care about. <laughs> I figured this group is going to want to see stuff because if you just talk about it, they're just not going to believe it or care, right? This, that's the beauty of DPRG as opposed to your day job is that here you've got to get things that work. <laughs> <laughs> well, sometimes not. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it worked when I it worked when I left it a moment ago. As long as the batteries didn't run down on these two pieces. <clears throat> John? Yes. Are you going to talk about the spectral components of your ping? Yes, I am. Yeah. If that, uh, yes, I will. Mm -hmm. So you want to you want to see that now, or you want no, to see the demo? No, no just go away. <laughs> okay. So it's a MATLAB script, and I just call it Beacons Three, Oceans Three, maybe. So. There's the pings. Should be doing 30 of them. So it, it, you may have been able to tell that they weren't occurring at the same time. They, it was, I think that's A, that's B, that's C. And it was ABC, ABC, ABC. All right. And it uh, does some filtering, not a lot. Oh. That's not good. That indicates that it's, I don't know where you are. Either the battery is dead or it's lost the connection. So let me do, let me take a moment and just use a different uh, tool to find out what I need to do. Yes, uh, I got away from the house without them, and it's probably this piece here. What does it mean? It'll need a triple A if it has died. Let me just see if this will try to get it going again. Come on, wake up. Yeah, those are not good. It looks like that part is running, and this part may be. You can see a little bump when it turns on, but and the other thing I can do is uh, let me retune it. This is what I get for you know a fourteen dollar receiver. If I had a say a fifty dollar receiver, this would not be a problem. That's too big. And in fact, when I read the reviews of this, a lot of people had complained about the, about the fact that it drifts. But Sometimes I like them close together, they like it better. And it may need a new battery. Mm. I have another way around this. I have a wi I can wire the microphone directly. I think we have some batteries. Is it okay if I do it straight wired? I mean, it, I, I did it with the wireless to, to just because that's what that would Do be I the real. Do you battery? I think Eric's got wireless is fine. I mean, wired, wired is wired fine. Wired is fine. Yeah. So, just go. 
Well, I'm talking for me, so we can have a show of hands. So. <laughs> okay. I just didn't want to take up uh, you know, any time. I think. <laughs>